happy. Welcome to day two. Um, we are going into the emotions. I'm going to hang tight for a good five minutes. Um, so we'll just, again, sit here awkwardly together um, until it hits 11 o'clock my time. Sorry, while I'm on the computer, it does a little shaky shake, but I won't do it the whole time. Don't worry. And let me get the comments up as well. I'll wait till I start seeing some folks pop on. And I will also text a little in the meantime. Okay? Okay. Hello, hello. We are f now four minutes early. It's great. Hello everyone. Hi Gretchen. So you can see me and hear me. Sorry, I'm texting. Just finishing up a couple little texts and emails while we wait for everybody to jump on because today is going to be an amazing day. And I haven't gotten myself into state yet because I want to show you guys how I do it instead so you guys can feel the energetic shift. Because right now lots is going on. I'm kind of boom, boom, bing, bong, bing. Um, so it'll be cool to kind of share it with you guys instead. So if you can see me and you can hear me for the few folks who are on currently, will you say yes and yes? Let me know. Hello from the UK. Hello, Eve. Hi, hi, 22 people, 2-2, two, two. and then I just saw 2-2 two, two on my phone, something that someone was telling me, of course, yes, you guys can see me and hear me, fantastic, do you guys like, oh, wrong way, I, I, I put that up for you guys, it's our little family photo, we're actually on the Heartland, does anyone not know um, what the Heartland is when I say that, by the way, because sometimes I'm a little in my own world, and I forget that you guys may not know everything that I'm talking about, okay, everyone's jumping on, fantastic, Good morning. Hi, Mandy and everyone. I can't say the whole time, but at least I can see part of it live. Yeah. And for those of you who didn't see my post about it, because I know that a lot of y'all are all over the world or people are still pouring into the group um, and because they, they were like, I signed up, but I never made it to the Facebook group. So I'm going to do an additional Q&A. You're going to want to make sure, one, that you stick through tomorrow. Um, as we talk about vibration and energy, that's like the most fun. That's the, that's the best part of manifestation. Um, but I'm also going to make a post after that for another q and I'm going to give you guys a bonus q and Probably Monday I've got like four interviews. I'm going to be all over the world on TV. So I've got to kind of focus on that most likely. And I want to make sure my energy is conserved. So I'm thinking either Monday if I'm just jamming. Otherwise, Tuesday um, we will jump on for that Q&A. But I'll make a post for anyone who is at work or if you are um, you know, sleeping at the time that I'm going live so that you guys can have some of your questions answered too. That's how we do that things in Authentic Living. You don't know the heartland. So fun story. Talk about a manifestation. I'll go ahead and tell you guys a story while we're waiting for um, everyone to join us today. So um, I'll, I'll kind of go backtrack, but it's a really, really cool manifestation in and of itself. So Oliver and I, my husband and I, uh, many of you know him as the spiritual activator. I always say that just because sometimes people don't even know his name's Oliver because they're like, he's the spiritual activator. Um, and he's on the energy healing um, end of the house, if you will. And so anyways, we were living in Laguna Beach and this beautiful home right on the water, you know, thinking like, this is it. Like we've made it in life all is well. Things are incredible. We were, you know, serving, 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 just, just a really, you know, beautiful life. And for some reason I could feel that we weren't supposed to be there, at least not forever. And so I was like, I don't know. I'm getting this feeling like, and I was getting really frustrated because I, I was like, we're not supposed to be here. Hello from Hawaii, Alaska. Amazing. Yes. Where are you guys all tuning in from? Arizona, Maryland. Let me know where you guys are tuning in from while I, I rattle off my little story until we get started. So um, we're sitting there in Laguna Beach and I'm like, I started getting all of these visions and the visions were of what I call you know, authentic lifers. So all the folks who take programs on authentic living, they become an authentic lifer. It was just, I don't know, it's what, what we call ourselves. And so I just saw these authentic lifers walking around land 
and I saw chickens and um, just like this incredible like community feel. It was so beautiful. And I was like, okay, well, if authentic lifers are there, then that's not like our home, but we're supposed to go somewhere. And so we were like, we're supposed to get a retreat center. So the heartland, the authentic living heartland is a retreat center. Now we looked in three places, y'all. We looked in Ojai, California. We looked in, I think it was, um, was it Maui? I, I can't remember where it was in Hawaii, but it was oceanfront property, y'all. And then we looked, uh, and then all of a sudden, this little tiny place in Dolores, Colorado. I didn't even know that Dolores existed, but Colorado. And we were thinking, Colorado is like the one that makes the least amount of sense because it's going to get snow. You know, a retreat center would have to kind of be shut down or you're going to have to do all the plowing. And, you know, there's a lot more movements to it. It's going to be, you know, all this logical stuff. So anyways, um, we went and looked at the one in Ojai, loved it, but wasn't, it wasn't it. Hawaii, things were not making sense. And so that wasn't it. And so we go, um, we drive all the way to Dolores because this was right before COVID was, um, COVID was COVID, but flights started getting canceled. We, we kept booking flights, couldn't get there. So I'm like, we're packing the kids up. We'll make a vacation of it. We'll stop in Sedona and then we'll go to, you know, this little Dolores place. You know, that's like a 14 hour drive from Laguna Beach and driving with at the time an eight month old and my son who he was nine or 10. I think he had just just turned nine. Um, and so we packed up uh, the car and, and we drove. We stopped in Sedona. We had a beautiful um, family trip. Kids were so happy the whole time. My little one didn't cry at all in the car. It was just this wonderful experience, very healing. And we get to uh, Dolores. Dolores, we get um, to, to the now heartland and we walked around, I think we probably saw like 10 rooms. It can sleep like 65 people. We didn't even go through the whole place. And my husband and I looked at each other and we're like, this is it. This is where we're supposed to be. <laughs> the realtor thought we were crazy. I remember him calling me the day before we were closing because I didn't close in person either. I had to get back home to Laguna. And um, so I'm going to like the UPS store to sign it. And I remember um, one of my family members also calling me and they were like, there's going to be this crazy virus, like, you know, a little bit um, psychic. There's going to be a crazy virus. It's going to shut down the world. Don't, don't sign the papers. Don't spend, you know, save your money, fear. Oh. And I was like, God brought me here. God will see me through. Sign that sucker off. And I remember the realtor calling me, good old Bill. And Bill's like, um, so I just want to make sure like you, you're really buying it. Like you, you know, you've only come once you didn't even see the whole property. And he, I was like, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking either we're crazy or we're somehow going to scam everybody. And he's like, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I don't know. I just don't understand. He's like, this is a, a large purchase. And I was like, it is, but you know, something that you'll learn about us in this tiny town will learn about us is that we go by divine guidance. And we're incredible manifestors. And if there is a ping that we are supposed to do something big or small, we follow it with our whole heart. Talk about a lesson for today, right? We're talking about emotions and heart. And it was so beautiful. And it's been such an incredible experience. We learned so much. We grew so much. We got right out of California at the right time when the pandemic hit. We had all this land for the kids to run and not be impacted by you know the heaviness of the world so that Oliver and I could help the world and not worry about our children. Uh, it was just so so beautiful so we're talking about you know the heart and emotions today and intuition will deeply fall into that and you know faith and surrender okay so anyways let's go ahead and get started now because it is 1104 oh my gosh okay netherlands canada um ohio finland oklahoma i'm trying to go upwards backwards vermont south africa france oh gosh currently in spain but you're from the netherlands we have some amazing coaches in the Netherlands. I'm actually going to be doing, I think, an interview on Monday um, from a, a podcast, and she is from the Netherlands. Porto Santo Island, Nigeria, Canada, oh, Canada. What a nice story and great that you were not giving up with so much struggles. How do you know that it was just an obstacle and not a sign to not do it? Please save that question for the end, deal? Because otherwise I'll go off on a tangent and we'll never start the training. Um, so as a reminder, y'all, when I say start asking questions, then post them just because for some reason on the lives, they kind of, they, I can't scroll all the way up. I'll use my phone, but it doesn't, it cuts off at a certain point and I'll, I won't be able to scroll that far back. Um, our last one has like a thousand comments, which is so amazing. So um, I want to make sure that we are on track for it. 
So a few pieces, I have to remember this. Oliver is pacing around here and he reminded me just by his presence. What I would love for you guys to do um, as we're jumping in right now is two things, actually. I'll give you one at the end, but one right now. For the remainder of the challenge, um, so that you guys can see the different shifts that all of your colleagues here and hopefully soon to be your soul family in some way are having, I want you guys to do hashtag aha, A-H-A, -A, hashtag aha, and then share one of your biggest ahas from yesterday. We jumped into so much. The mind is a big thing, and I tried to give you as much as I could in an hour and a half, but there is still so much more in, in a sense, but I gave you the, all of the bones to be able to create massive shifts. And obviously, I'm hoping that it touched you so much that you want to continue, whether it's with my book or some of our programs, or you're like, I got everything I needed. That's perfect. That's what these free challenges are for, is to get people up and running, manifesting, and moving forward in life, raising their vibration so that you can positively impact the world. Um, but I'd love for you guys to share hashtag aha, because then the hashtag becomes searchable to everyone else. And then I get to see them too. And I get to cheerlead with you all because it also raises my vibration to know that something that I shared with you in some way positively impacted your world. It just, there's no words to explain what it does for, for my own soul as well. So hashtag aha and feel free while we're hashtag ha ha. <laughs> aha, H, oh my gosh, A, now I'm going ha ha, A H A, like aha. Aha! So A H A hashtag Aha, some type of breakthrough. And while we're talking today, feel free to also throw them in the chat boxes here um, as we're talking about stuff. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you guys are already saying it. How I peak, I then self sabotage, feeling I don't deserve it. Persona that is triggered. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. Cool. So now we're rocking and rolling. Let's jump in again. I've got my little tiny bits of notes so that we stay succinct. I think how. How emotions and heart, when I talk about it, goes is I'm kind of giving you like these little segments. And some of them are lessons. Some of them are like step by steps, if you will. But I like the lessons because when you understand a concept, you're like, okay, I understand a concept now. What do I do with it? It comes into play almost immediately. So the things that we talk about, like the first one we're going to talk about, the three tiers of emotions. We touched on that yesterday, right? I want you guys, I'm repping Betty White today, guys. I don't know if you guys can see this. Betty! I'll do it like this so you guys can enjoy her beautiful face as well. Love her. Loved her. Love her. Energy just gets moved around. It doesn't go away. So any hoodle doodle. Um, when we talked about the three tiers yesterday, we're jumping into it in fullness today, but it's a concept, right? And you're going to see how some of the things we talk after that are going to fill in the gaps of the how to's. You might be like, wow, triggers, you know, fall into this particular piece and so forth. Cool. Okay. Let's rock and roll. Welcome officially to day two of our three day challenge on how to raise your vibration so you can manifest fast. So you can manifest consistently. That's my favorite word when it comes to manifestations because we're all manifesting all the time. We learned that yesterday, right? How do we stop countering our manifestations? Stop counter manifesting. So a huge piece of manifestation is emotions. I learned this in my early 20s from a very intelligent man who is no longer on this planet. He went off to do some other incredible things. He was actually an alien contactee for the government. That's, that was the weird world that I lived in, y'all. I've seen some things, let me tell you, but I won't uh, share them right now. That's, that's when we get weird at the heartland and we're talking about some stuff. But I remember one of the things that I had read and some of his writings, or, or maybe he had said it, I don't remember, but I know that I had gotten it from him, was that emotions are the first unit of consciousness. And at the time I was like, okay, I kind of understand what he's saying. But now that I learned how to relate that to manifestation specifically, and I ran with it, I understand it on a whole nother level because where our consciousness goes is what manifests next. Remember, where our subconscious reels energy shoots off outwardly, we receive it back, right? Consciously or unconsciously. And usually the subconscious, as we learned yesterday again, is probably running the show if we're not getting what we want. And there's something that we need to heal in the subconscious. Now, a huge piece of being able to heal your mind is to use your heart, right? Using your emotions to your advantage. So before we go into three tiers of emotions, though, we need to open up y'all's hearts. So I'm going to get myself into state right now because I haven't yet and I want you guys to see it. You're gonna see me, I hope at least, and you can feel 
how profound the shift is because right now I'm pretty much in my head, which is a great place to be now. Wasn't, you know, decades ago, but I'm going to shift into my heart and I'm going to have the two communicating so that you can feel the deepest form of love that I can get into to give to you all right now. Cool. I breathe really loud when I do this. It takes three breaths. Okay, so my heart is wide open now. You need to make sure that yours are as much as possible too. So I want you to play around with a couple of thoughts here. First and post below, do you think that your heart is open right now? I wanna hear that. Do you feel that your heart is open? Or if you wanna do a scale of one to five, how open is it? Five being like, I'm totally wide open, Mandy. I feel you know completely safe in this moment and I'm ready to receive or you know, I've got some other thoughts in my mind or my heart is completely shut off because it's been hurt too many times. It's all good. Oh, I felt my vibration go up. Beautiful. Mine too. <laughs> Opening. Yes, I do. Yes. My heart is wide open. Totally open. Amazing. Ah, oh, yes. Beautiful. Okay, cool. And if you're like, my heart is totally closed, that's okay as well. So with a heart open, this is something. Yes. And tears. Mm. Beautiful. Something about it, right? Like we're not always crying out of pain, but I know I get watery eyes or I'll have a tear come down because water is a conductor of energy, right? And so sometimes we cry because it helps us further heal. Like a lot of my hands-on healers that my husband, um, you know, teaches, uh, he teaches lots of different types of healers, but there's a lot of hands-on healers that go to him and their hands get really clammy or their feet get really like sweaty and stuff. And it's just because they've got that healing energy ready to rock and roll. So for me, um, I'm not a clammy person, but I also don't really do hands-on healing sometimes, but um, it'll come through my eyes because that's just, you know, all of this, this releasing or understanding or unconditional love or what, you know, whatever it is, it feels amazing. Okay, so Bear, you are perfectly on time. Don't worry, divine timing, right? Um, we're just kind of getting into our heart space. And I think sometimes, at least for myself, when people would tell me like, oh, open your heart, get in your heart space, I'd be like, no thanks. And I don't you know, creepy, icky feeling. Like, I don't even know what that means. So I'd realized that depending on the situation, sometimes my heart would be wide open and sometimes it'd be completely shut down. And this lesson came to me in fullness when I realized there was, I was actually pregnant with um, the littlest one that you saw, Zion, uh, yesterday. I was pregnant with him. And um, my husband and I were just kind of like missing each other, you know, like we, we communication and um, just we couldn't feel that deep connection that we typically have. And I was going through quite a bit, you know, pregnancy sometimes and babies bring in tons of growth. And I set a lot of intentions. So I was growing a, a ton during that pregnancy. And my heart started shutting off unknowingly. And I remember um, we were sitting on the couch together in Laguna at the time, in Laguna Beach. And um, I was like, if I envision my heart, and I invite you guys to do this really fast, um, my pets can even feel your frequency. <laughs> That's so great. Um, uh, I, I saw my heart when I, I kind of closed, and I was like, what does my heart look like? And I saw, it was like bones, like it looked like a rib cage, but it was like locked in. My heart was like, you know, very protected and locked in. And so I imagined when I realized, I was like, I'm shutting my heart off to my husband, and he was doing it to me too. We just, you know, fell into a pattern that we didn't realize we were in for a couple weeks. And I just imagined my heart cracking right back, or, you know, the thing that was protecting it, I should say, cracking right back open. Because I had realized that in our attempt to protect our heart, typically from, you know, trauma or being taken advantage of, or thinking that our heart is weak, right? I realized that I was ensuring the pain and the deeper need for protection. And so those you know, rib cages were gonna eventually turn into a brick wall. Um, and I'd spent most of my life you know, in that space and had cleared it. And then it, you know, it tried to sneak back in a little bit. So I invite you all to right now say, okay, is there any blockages in my heart? Does it feel truly wide open? And what scenarios does it not feel that way? You can post those below too, because you'll probably see some relatability here. But what causes your heart to close, right? And what I had seen, I mean, talk about the truth of it, my vulnerability, my ability to open my heart so much 
And what I was saying yesterday of um, I want to trust myself or I choose to trust myself so much that I can be around anyone and still be me, still have my heart open. The magic that comes from that, when you embody that, when you choose to see and feel that you are safe no matter what. And your heart is meant to stay open, right? Your intuition comes from your heart. So your intuition needs to be turned on for you to be able to see when individuals who may end up accidentally or intentionally hurting that heart come through, right? So it's like we can't actually protect ourselves because then we shut off the ability to know when to protect ourselves. So then we sit in constant protection mode, which shuts off our authentic self, which doesn't allow for us to be on a high vibration and manifest that which we desire. So it doesn't work. And like we talked about yesterday with our minds, we have to remind ourselves and tell our brain that's not the way to do it. I get it, but that's not how it works. So thank you, you know, whether it's a persona that shuts the heart off or, you know, all this just trauma pain, you don't even know where it came from. Heart has to be open to manifest. Cool? Okay. Ooh, these ahas are so good. Okay, so now let's jump into the three tiers of emotions. This one is so amazing because you can go back to it all the time and be like, which tier am I in right now? And which one, if I'm not on the top, which one do I want to get to? So I imagine three like blocks, kind of like, you know, a pyramid, if you will, or I don't know, I kind of see them all the same size, just giving you a visual. At the bottom, I see emotions running people. Who here gets ran by your emotions? Like you get triggered, an emotion comes in, right? A persona comes in, but that emotion is, is of, you know, more density, anger, frustration, fear, hopelessness, shame, guilt, whatever it is, right? And then you just like, you're a tornado, just getting flung around by the emotion. You are a victim to the emotions you experience. Okay, so some people are saying, yeah, that's, that's totally me. So that is the first tier of really not manifesting, but the steps to be able to become a master manifester, right? And so that bottom level is where most of humanity I've seen sits. It's where I sat still at this point in my life, the majority of my life. I sat there and I was a victim to circumstance. I was a victim to my emotions. I didn't know, it didn't cross my mind that I could change them. Yeah, people would say that, but I was like, well, I, I can't. I feel it so fully that I become it, right? And that's why I, I, the one thing I really don't like is that I am angry. I try to make sure I watch my words on that because words hold by you know a frequency signature, right? So I'm always like, I am feeling the vibration of anger. That is more accurate. I am not the vibration of anger or sadness or hopelessness or whatever it is. But if I so choose to become it, imagine what else I will create if I assume that role, if I take all of that on, right? So it's just, again, a frequency signature hit us. We grabbed hold of it and it produced an emotion in us. And then we're on the, the crazy roller coaster ride. So that's the first step, right? Most of humanity sits there. We are victims of circumstance is what I'll call it. Burping. The second tier, this is a great place to be. Have you guys ever seen the, um, if someone can Google it at some point or post it in the group, or maybe I'll, I'll find it or if one of my teammates are, are watching this right now. Um, and it's actually in my book, um, the way that I like to look at it. But there is a ton on Google or DuckDuckGo of the emotional vibration chart. So you'll see like death at the, you know, the bottom. And then it will go into like shame and guilt, fear, hopelessness, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. But in the middle there, I kind of created this one, but I think it's in some of the charts, is neutrality. Neutrality is pure possibility. Say it with me now. Neutrality is pure possibility. So again, bottom is emotions run us. That second tier is neutrality. Or as we talked about yesterday, we could insert curiosity, right? Taking five steps back and saying, I'm curious. I felt that emotion very fully, but I'm now curious as to why it happened versus totally stuck in the persona, only seen from those lenses and living it out over and over again until another persona comes in to save the day. And then I just ping pong around in authenticity, right? So that second tier is neutrality. I love neutrality because let's say you're like, I was feeling completely hopeless when I got triggered. And you want to tell me to go to positivity? You want to tell me to go to love and joy and enlightenment? That is sometimes, that's just too big of a jump 
to do instantaneously or to do within a five minute period, but we need to get ourselves out. So instead of saying, I have to go from shame to self love, that ain't happening. And then you completely self defeat and you don't even try. You can go, I can go from shame to curiosity, to neutrality, to this is just feedback, but what does it mean? Does that feel good? Ooh, it feels so good. So pure possibility. And I, I say pure possibility in two ways. So if you, I ever confuse you, I'm sorry, but it's just, my words are my words, right? So neutrality is pure possibility, but there's a vibration as well. I'm just going off on a tangent on this. I'll probably talk about it more tomorrow called is the is energy. And it is above love and joy. And it is also a different form vibrationally, certainly, but of also pure possibility. So the pure possibility that we choose in neutrality in that particular tier is all about what meaning will I choose, right? What else makes sense outside of the self-defeating um, perspectives that I have chosen? The ones that got me, boom, into a low vibration emotionally or are naturally low vibrational emotions to experience. Now I'm going to see it as feedback, which neutralizes the negative vibration, neutrality right? We get back into a state of what is possible, regardless of the trigger, regardless of the previous emotion, what is possible now. And so what we're looking for, similar to our ceiling in our basement, is just to go a couple steps up. So again, I'm not looking for even neutral to total enlightenment, but I feel like neutral to, um, uh, I don't, I'm simplistic, happiness, happiness going to like bliss, joy, whatever, blah, 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 and it goes up. But I'm not trying to jump all the way. I might be like, okay, so now I'm neutral. How can I stay in a state of curiosity? Maybe that's as far as you go that day. Perfect. Great. At least you're not getting triggered by negative emotions, right? But what is this, the next emotional step up and how can you get there? Is this tracking? You guys feel good about this? Cool. So the second tier there is neutrality. That's where typically when we're low, that's where we want to get to first. We just want to get to the second tier so that we can dissolve the trigger, do the pattern interrupts, do all that mind work we talked about so that we can get to that five steps back method and just be curious. Now is the best part. It's the third tier, oh, the magical one. And that is where master manifestors play. And that is we use our emotions to manifest. We choose our emotions because we have managed our triggers. We have loved on and met the needs of our personas and we pattern interrupt when a low vibrational emotion is experienced and we get curious as to why it showed up and we heal it. Now that sounds like a lot of steps. This stuff becomes second nature. It can happen in literally 10 seconds. Now it's like my brain's not even a part of it. I'm just like, Oh, I was triggered. That's not really me. Okay. I understand the persona. Let me talk to someone. Oh, I'm just going to get a hug. I feel great. Five seconds, y'all. Of course, practice makes perfect, right? At first, I'd be like, I am so triggered. <sighs> the pattern wrapped kind of worked, but it only worked from going to like total frustration to like, now I just want to go lay down. Well, okay, like, I guess that's okay. Well, now I'm laying down. Okay, I'm feeling a little calmer. It's been a couple hours. I need to do another pattern wrapped. I'm not going to lay down anymore. I'm going to go take that salt bath and then I'm going to journal. Well, now I'm kind of getting curious. I'm kind of hitting neutrality, blah, 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 right? So that top tier is we use emotions to manifest what we desire. Emotions are the fuel. That is why one of the biggest reasons why I told you guys yesterday, whenever I get triggered or life isn't working for me in the way that I want it to, or I don't feel the way I want to feel, I don't self defeat. I get grateful. I immediately raise my vibration and I go, this is feedback. So I, I just went to the neutrality, right? I'm excited about it. And I'm grateful because I know I'm going to master more of myself. Boom, I'm up, right? And now it's such an automatic thing that is no matter, no matter what the low vibration is, boom, 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 I'm jumping up really fast. Guys, I did this when my dad died. I did this when uh, my daughter, I, I miscarried her. I've done this with the hardest and the most simplistic of things. It works every time. And it becomes so second nature over time because guess what we talked about yesterday, the neurological pathway becomes wired as such. So no matter what happens in life, you are wired to see the beauty of it, 
understand it, create gratitude, and then detangle that dense energy, which is a whole chapter in my book, y'all. And I, thank you guys. I've seen so many of you from this challenge buying it. We have a whole nother group and challenges in there too. So it's about to get crazy fun. And so we've got all of those pieces and life becomes our oyster because if we only sit in a trigger for a few seconds or a few hours, whatever feels right to you, a few days versus a few years, whatever, we just want to condense the amount of time we stay in the low emotional state, then guess where else we are in a high vibrational state and what is available there? Blessings. So I'll tell you guys this full story because it's so powerful and I'm still like seeing all the blessings in it. And um, please don't feel bad for me or anything. That's not my intention in saying this, but I want you guys to see that regardless of whatever you have gone through, as traumatic as it can be, you can come out the other side so beautifully and your life will enhance. So um, I was pregnant, right? And I had a miscarriage a little over a month ago now, I think it was. And I had done everything right. It definitely took me by surprise. And I remember um, the, the day that I, I sat there and found out because I didn't start bleeding, which I'm actually really grateful for. Sorry if this is a trigger warning, y'all. Let's do this with love, okay? So whether you have gone through um, losing a child as well, I'm sending so, so much love with you, um, to you, with you, I guess with you, right? Um, and, and I understand in my own way. So anyways, I um, really took our family by surprise. So many beautiful things were happening. I'm like, I'm launching my book. All these incredible people. Wait till you guys see, you know, they're, they're assisting in my purpose work. Um, I'm just, I'm feeling on cloud nine. This has been such an easy pregnancy. What? And I remember I had actually just done um, a TV segment in uh, um, North Carolina. And, I, and it was one of my best, you know, interviews yet. Da 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 da. And then where I'm like, now I get to go to my ultrasound and see my baby girl. And, you know, we found out that I had miscarried. This little girl had sat in, I'm trying not to be super triggering or gross. She had sat in my body for like three weeks, zero, zero symptoms of a miscarriage up to that point. So I'm sitting there. I've got these beautiful women, three women, two doctors and a, a midwife. And of course my husband were all in the room. And they're just holding me and, and touching my shoulder. And it was such a gentle way of knowing where I know that many people don't always get to experience it that way. And I felt the sadness, but I also felt so much love. Now, of course, I went through a couple dips, you know, after that, especially when the, the physical piece was the most traumatic. Because as soon as I got home, my body, it was like, she was like, okay, glad we didn't create too much trauma, mom. But now it's time. And that was a lot more traumatic. And so anyways, um, you know, I had my dips and stuff, but the beautiful piece, what immediately happened, even, you know, the day that we went home and of course I was crying and, and, you know, and experiencing all of that, I sat there and I was like, she was like the cherry on top of an already incredible life and had two beautiful, healthy children. And I meant it. It was this, this incredible, beautiful gratitude, but it didn't stop there because I was like, this must have happened for a reason. And I realized that because I continued to, the, of course, I mean, it's grief. Grief is, you know, sometimes a little bit different than some traumas. So I, I would grieve and grieve um, in my own ways. And I, again, had my ups and downs, but this really high vibration would continue to welcome me back in because it's where I typically sit. And anything bad that happens, I could see in real time that neurological pathway and that beautiful gift from my daughter saying, we're choosing gratitude. We're choosing gratitude. Here it is. It feels authentic and it is so beautiful, right? And so um, anyway, as the weeks went on, y'all, the, the energy and the lessons that this short amount of time that we got to experience our daughter was in the highest good. And it is so amazing. And we're still experiencing the blessings and lessons. I am, I am reaching new vibrations and so is the whole family in ways that I, I didn't even think were possible, right? I thought she had to be Earthside for it to happen. And no, it was so perfect and so beautiful. And so I used my emotions, you know, regardless of the density of them in moments, grief being a very, you know, big one. And then moving it back to, at the time, it went right to gratitude. But then I would find myself in neutrality and be like, I'm so curious why this happened. Why would something like this happen? Like, how do you find a blessing in something like losing a child, right? And I know I might be stretching some of you guys a little bit here. And, and it took a moment, you know, it's been four weeks now, so I guess not that long. And then there might be more waves of grief. I'm, I'm prepared, that's okay. Um, but I feel like at least right now, that's probably not gonna be the case because I chose and saw and leaned into the blessings and the flow of the universe so much 
that it's like it could have been no other way. And it was so perfect. And one of my friends told me this, and this I'm going to tell the world this over and over again when we were talking about that. And she said, Mandy, I wouldn't say this to most people. She's like, but I know that you would understand it. You know, there's no anger in you in, in these regards. And she's like, in a very, very, very high vibration, this was the most beautiful thing that could ever happen. The greatest orchestration of love. And I was like, I know. I feel that completely. That is the beauty of being able to manifest all that you desire in the highest good of all and being able to shift your emotions so that regardless of what life may throw in you in moments, it's just gone like that. It is turned into and transmuted into something beautiful. And as love beings, light workers, whatever you want to call yourselves, humans on this, you know, having this human experience, souls having a human experience, y'all, it's so amazing when you can transmute the density of the 3D and move it into higher vibrational spaces, higher dimensions, and your heart being open to receive and shift the emotions that it experiences is key. So, okay, going back in, that top tier is the full manifestations, right? We are using our emotions, we are seeing them for what they are, which is feedback. We get curious about them. We throw them up on a whiteboard and go, hmm, why would I choose this? This is weird. Oh, that's because of that thing over there. Well, that's not really authentic anymore. Do I need that? And we play around with it and we move, you know, we, we literally move matter around in our world so we can produce new matter, right? Ooh, this is fun. Okay, <laughs> so that's one lesson. We've got a lot more to go. I was like, we'll be shorter today. We, st we still have 30 minutes before the hour. Okay, da, 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 da. Okay. so let's go into, we'll kind of jump into a little bit of science piece. This is just a little snippet to remind you the full process here, which we'll dive into again tomorrow just to like really hammer it in. Yesterday we talked about, we experience a frequency signature, our mind does something with it, right? So same thing, let's add to it. We experience a frequency signature. Maybe our boss yells at us, maybe it's an intrusive thought. Um, maybe a trauma from the past, whatever. Something comes in and triggers us, but we see it as a trigger because we resonate with it for some reason, right? Some people don't get triggered when something happens. Like, I don't have a boss, but if a boss yelled at me now, I'd be like, well, I'm out because this is kind of toxic. Like, why yell? Let's have a conversation, right? But it wouldn't bother me. I'd just be like, sounds like they're, you know, they're dealing with some things and they're going to learn how to be a better leader. Would not affect me. But others, if they feel powerless, they might be like, <gasps> this is horrible, or they've got some type of resonance with that trigger, which is why it produces a response, right? And so again, you experience some type of signature, but it resonates with you, so then it causes a trigger. And there are positive triggers, y'all, but we're talking about the ones that cause counter-manifesting in this particular challenge, right? And so then it causes a negative or dense emotional response. So that creates that emotion, and the emotion gets communicated, and neurohormones get released, right? So then our body is flooded with a very physical thing, right? A chemical reaction, if you will. And those hormones are now flooding in our body and further creating the vibration of that, which is, you know, what we're sending off. I call that the dominant frequency effect. You guys talked about, or you guys, you guys hopefully have been doing your um, emotional check-ins. I was talking about how do you feel yesterday and so forth. If not, let's go over it again. Set an alarm on your phone. This is also a part of a chapter in my book. Energetic check-ins, unbelievable for being proactive about your triggers. What do you also be proactive with them? Your emotions, because the trigger causes an emotional flood, right? A hormone flood, a, a thought process, thus a frequency, right? What we send outwardly into the world. So we wanna make sure that our dominant frequency is positive, right? It's okay to have those moments of dips. I go into them sometimes and then I get myself right back out. But it's not like two seconds of a dip is gonna completely sabotage everything because my dominant frequency is still positive. And I remember thinking about this. Um, I was talking to one of my friends who's a physicist. This was years and years ago. And they said, the world looks as it does. You know, there is war, there is famine, there is pain and all this stuff because dominantly earth vibrates at a dense and a low rate because we're primal, because we want money, there's too much greed, there's too much, you know, incorrect power. It's just, there, you know, there's some yuckiness. There's still plenty of beauty. It is a beautiful world. You can live in a different dimension, absolutely, and, it, and you experience the world differently. I, I can attest to that. 
Um, but he had said, you know, the world has a dominant vibration that is negative. And so he, you know, we kind of went down and up, right? We were started a conversation about it. So the first piece is all of us here, um, you know, all 271 of us that are on live right now and myself, so 272, right? We have a collective consciousness right now. It's pretty darn high, right? <laughs> you guys can feel that. So all of us together meeting in this way beautifully enhances a higher vibration on the planet. The more we shine our light, the greater and further that that energy goes. I should probably save a little bit of that for tomorrow, but I digress. But that experience, that collective consciousness that we have is high vibrational. But let's just say that we were all, let's say I came on here and I was just complaining or I was talking about my miscarriage and making you guys all feel bad for me, right? And then we're all feeling really sad and we're all feeling the vibration of grief and da 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 da. Then we'd have a dominantly negative frequency, right? Now let's take, um, let's just pretend like we're all in the state of Colorado. You guys are all in Colorado with me. We have the state of Colorado. We make a very small fraction of it, but let's just say the state of Colorado is also dominantly negative. And then we have the United States and then we have the planet. So there's these little groups of collective consciousness and they keep, you know, growing outwardly and we are all parts of a whole. But plant, this is what he said, obviously, and I'm not saying that I agree or disagree, but planet Earth has a dominantly negative frequency. And so as it sends outwardly into the universe, the universe brings it back and we get hurricanes and tsunamis and uh, disasters and, you know, more, more pain sometimes. Now, I also understand, and this was where him and I uh, got to help each other, right? I understand the full power of the mind and that, I mean, literally, I don't know, I wasn't there when Jesus or Buddha or, you know, a lot of um, spiritual teachers in the past were here, but they sounded pretty awesome. And I can feel their energy and I can feel their vibration, you know, long after they're gone, whether it was, you know, a full embodiment, whatever that is. And one person, please remember this, everybody, one person with their light fully illuminated can change the entire planet. One person can change the entire planet if they are in a high enough vibration. That's why we have to do these things together. That's why we have to ignite our light because the planet benefits for years and years, you know, to come as if, you know, time was really a construct, right? Okay. Anyways, so I talked about that. Okay, so this is going to be how we're going to also shift. We're talking about shifting our emotions, right? I call this God's lenses or higher self's lenses. You guys can use source, universe, higher self. I, I don't think God is like Zeus in the sky sitting down thunderbolts or anything. I just, the word I really like. To me, it means source. It doesn't have a gender or anything like that. And so, uh, you know, play with whatever you want. But basically, we want the highest vibrational perspective here. So I call it God's eyes or love's eyes. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so you'll see me say that interchangeably. Whenever you are in a space where you feel disempowered, where you feel triggered, this is one of the greatest pattern interrupts in the world, I think. Whenever you are in a denser emotion, stop for a second and just go, I don't think I have on love's eyes right now or love's glasses, whatever. <laughs> don't get lost in the words, right? I'm obviously getting lost in the words here. And whatever lenses you have on, you can literally imagine, you know, you take them off and put on love's eyes, put on God's eyes, put on source's eyes, put on the highest vibrational perspectives, lenses that you can, you better throw them suckers on and see exactly what is happening from a different space. This is a great way to get to neutrality or to more quickly jump all the way up to master manifestations, right? Because the only pain we have is when we choose a perspective that doesn't serve us, right? And you could have a lot of things going wrong in your world. I under stand but the perspective shift will change what is in front of you and eventually make it cease to exist or instantaneously make it cease to exist right i remember doing this with a woman who was um being abused very badly and her understandably her lenses were uh very depending on which lenses there was a couple but some of them included um i can't leave him because he said he will kill himself um if i leave he will hurt my children um, he, yeah, it's just, just tons and tons of stuff, right? He needs me, all of that stuff. And so 
um, I, I, that we went through this lenses thing and I was like, okay, so what lenses do you have on? Right. And we called it a name and everything. We had this incredible, you know, beautiful understanding of, it was a very specific, you know, bundle of personas and we called it that. And then we, she was very, you know, kinesthetic in her pattern interrupts. So we did the physical piece. We literally made some little fake glasses. She takes them on, puts them off and so forth. And she's like, oh, I'm seeing through, I, I can't believe I can't remember the exact personas. It was like Betty or something. It reminded her of her aunt. And she'd be, Betty, how weird is that? Um, and she would put them, maybe that's a Freudian slip. Um, and so she would take them off and be like, okay, I've got to take these, these lenses off. Okay, let me put on, you know, my, my sources lenses. All right, let me see the situation differently. And then she'd, I mean, boom, she'd be like, I have to leave. I have to leave him and here's how I'm going to do it. I mean, it was an incredible shift of energy where she just saw it for what it was. And I believe that when you're in those higher emotions or you're, you know, choosing to shift your state in essence, especially to a higher perspective, that information, boom, that energy flows right in and will shift the emotions needed to make the decisions that are also needed. So regardless of whatever triggers you experience, whatever density you have, just play with the idea. To me, it's a total fact and truth that you're just looking through the, long, the wrong lenses. The perspective needs to shift and it has to feel right, right? We can't lie to our brain, but it does have to be a couple steps up on that emotional scale that still makes sense to us, but that feel more light and more right. Light and right, light and right. Cool? Oh my gosh, you guys' feedback is making me so happy. Okay, cool. We did that piece. Da -da -da -da. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we kind of talked about this, but I want to I want to hit it again. It's like why why having your heart open is so important. And I know that most of you said my heart's totally, you know, I know Betty White's on my shirt and, that, and then I said Betty. I'm wondering now if I'm just saying that and I it just got into my brain because I really don't remember, but I know she had an aunt with a it was Barbara. Anyway, I digress. So, having your heart open. Many of you said that your heart is open. I understand. But if there's any times where you find that your heart has shut down, if it closes, depending on who you're around and so forth, even those moments, like I remember times where I'd be, this was actually when um, I was working clinically and we were in Scandinavia and my husband and I, he was my um, boyfriend at the time and we were riding a bus and there was a woman there who, um, you know, she was suffering mentally, you could tell. And she would like, I, I think that we kind of thought she might pull out a knife and start stabbing everybody. She was angry. She was talking to herself. Um, she said, so to me, I just saw pain. Right. And of course she sits like right in front of us. Cause the bus seats, like, you know, we were heading to the clinic and the bus seats face each other or whatever. And, um, I just was like, okay, a part of me wants to like get up and, you know, go somewhere else because I'm fearing for myself right now in case she shanks me. But another part of me was like, I can see so clearly when I put on God's lenses that she needs love in huge doses. And I felt like I was the one who was supposed to give it to her. And so instead, although my heart was like, ee, I was like, stay open. <laughs> and so I kept that sucker open and I poured love and we had a beautiful conversation. Um, and uh, she, she had a Coca-Cola and it went from her trying to throw it on everybody to her just like sitting and holding it, you know, and we had this, you know, I think it was probably a five minute conversation. I don't know, but she felt the frequency and I kept my heart open and I was able to serve someone instead of shut down. Now let's say that I was feeling unsafe again, heart open, because when you feel all the feels, you can differentiate them. You can transmute them and elevate them. Just because you shut your heart down does not mean you shut off the negative emotions. But the funky thing is you actually shut off the good ones. Not weird. So what you're trying to do is only feel the good and shut off the bad, but it literally does the opposite. You still feel the pain because being small and protecting yourself does not feel good, right? If you truly think about it, like who wants to do that, right? Like in your higher self, at least who wants to sit there and constantly have to protect themselves and look over their shoulder and shut down their heart and not be their authentic self and not be crazy and wild and expressive and, and whatever they want to be. That feels terrible, but we try to avoid that because we might get it rejected or it's been painful before, or someone, you know, took advantage of us or hurt us prior. And then we carry that with us. We keep our hearts closed thinking we're protected, thinking that then we'll only experience the good and there's no good, not at the level that is possible when our hearts are open. 
And so um, I remember talking to um, someone who was really struggling with PTSD. He was a, he is a veteran. Um, I work with a couple of veterans, obviously. And um, when very, you know, uh, he's macho, like you don't express emotions, you know, didn't even know he has a feminine side or that feminine didn't mean female. It was a really, really cool conversation, not ones that I typically have um, because they've gone through so much of my work. They're like, got it, right? And we're just, we're running. Um, but it was a cool experience. And um, when uh, I talked about this and I was like, your heart is so shut off. And he knew that much, but I was like, so how's it working for you? How much pain do you experience every day that you think you're shutting off that is constantly finding you? And you know, you might think that you're really strong and you're, you're macho by not expressing your emotions. But I was like, I can tell you right now. And I, I used, you know, my husband as an example, cause I thought it was perfect. I was like, my husband's in touch with his feminine and his masculine side. And he's incredibly balanced and it is the sexiest thing about him. And he's like, what, you know? And I'm like, heart open, dude. Like the, the bravest thing you can be, the most macho, if you want to call it that thing you can be is to have that heart open. Think about the strength that comes from that, right? Vulnerability, Brene Brown talks about it. Like what vulnerability is bravery or I don't know how she says it, but absolutely heart open is not scary and dangerous as long as you are also digging into growth. Now, if you're just gonna walk around with your heart open and let people keep slapping you down, I understand that's painful. Don't do that, please. That's not what I'm saying here. But if you are willing to work through the triggers in the moments that someone might, you might think or perceive, right? that they're stabbing at you. Maybe it's because they're so wounded or you called something something that it wasn't. I, it could be many things, right? But you shift that perspective, but you keep that heart open and you choose a higher emotion and a higher experience and you do all the things we talked about yesterday, this, you know, working through the triggers that show up and all that jazz, it's magic. And then you realize, I don't ever need to shut down my heart. And the only time that things stop working for me is when my heart is shut off, when I'm trying to solve everything only with my monkey brain when I'm getting all you know, stressed out and I'm not trusting myself. Because that's the whole lesson in of itself. People will ask me, Mandy, how do you trust yourself? How do you follow your intuition? And I'm like, you just start doing what you wanna do and then you see the feedback that happens. There's this saying, and I love it so much, 99% of people will make a decision and spend all of their energy questioning, wondering, beating themselves up about if it was in fact the right decision. But 1% of people, and I'm very proud to say I belong to that 1% most of the time at least, 1% of people will make a decision and spend all of their energy afterwards proving, proving that it was in fact the right decision. Right? So if we're in a free will universe and you can choose whatever you so desire, might as well choose the things that are good. Might as well choose the perspectives that feel right. Might as well open that heart and heal. We're only here for a limited amount of time. What's the point otherwise? Okay. <sighs> dun, 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 dun. Okay, last piece, specific to manifestation and raising your vibration. The reason I love the open heart, processing your emotions, transmuting them so that your heart is open. And I mean, scientifically speaking, we know that the heart has um, a, a larger electromagnetic field, right? You guys have seen that, the Heart Math Institute studies and all that jazz. So from a physical level as well, our aura, our energy field is felt more greatly when our heart is open. Our hearts, pew, they go out further because our auras are like, typically speaking, depending on the person, about 18 inches outside of us. Um, and you can measure your aura and how far it is as well. Um, usually, especially when I'm teaching, mine's like 25 feet out. I've got a you know, wider range. I'm reaching more people, right? Maybe it goes to all corners of the universe, technically, also. But you know, that personal aura thing, right? But the heart, especially when the heart is open, that energy is like, boom, universe, feel me, feel me faster. So I want you guys to remember this and just play with this saying. The heart doesn't work with time constraints. What I mean by that is the heart doesn't know, doesn't care about, doesn't follow the rules of the constructs of time. Because a lot of people, when they want to manifest or they need to heal or raise their vibration, they automatically go, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. And I've actually have the gift of bending time. It was given to me a couple years ago. I use it very sparingly because it does some really crazy things. It's one of, a, a new spiritual gift, if you will. But I learned so much about the incorrect understanding of time. 
and time is actually related to our energy how we send things outwardly when people say like live in the now live in the now it's probably annoying because people say it too much but it's true because when we are present time does not exist in the same way but what happens when you're present you're in your heart space the heart space doesn't think about the future or the past at least not in defeating ways right the mind cannot live in the now. It's always reliving the past or fearing for the future, especially the monkey brain part. Again, we want our minds to eventually get to a healthier place. Subconscious heals, heart and mind work together. Boom, manifestations immediately. Time doesn't exist. So whenever someone comes to me and they're like, I am you know, this age or I've gone through this many things, it's gonna take a long time, I'm like, um, no, actually, uh, everyone's, of course, different in the highest good of all. I'm not like, I will 100% do this in 30 minutes. But y'all, I've seen people completely shift their energy and forever moving forward in their lives at some of our events within a 20-second shift. And this is my saying, it doesn't take 10 years to make a change. It takes a second, not even a second. It's instantaneous to shift your energy to make a change. It takes you 10 years to make the decision to fully be embodying the change. But you can embody the change like that, like changing a radio dial, you're just finding literally a new frequency and it's coming in loud and clear. Okay, you guys love that. Beautiful, okay, so now I'm gonna open up for a couple questions, go ahead and throw them up. That wraps up our day two on emotions and heart, how it relates to raising our vibration and manifesting all that we desire in the highest good of all. All right, let's pop open some questions. If you guys have any, of course, feel free to post them up. I'll answer just a couple. We'll actually end today on time though at 12. I'm thinking at least. I always say that and then I'm, I'm not honest about it. Okay, let's see here. Questions, questions, questions. I love this. Your guys' comments are so fantastic. Okay, I don't see any questions yet, so I'll hang tight for just a couple minutes while you guys are typing them out. Take your time. Lots of ahas. Don't forget, hashtag aha. And what I would love to ask you guys to do while you guys are throwing any questions that you have um, is could you also, if this feels right to you, not just in the thread here, but for today as well as yesterday, I want to see your hashtag ahas. What breakthroughs, and you could also do hashtag breakthrough if you'd like, um, but I want to see what really resonated for y'all. What shifted your energy so greatly um, over the past two days that we have shared together so that, again, I can celebrate with you. Okay, a lot of you are asking, um, I'm seeing it here and here, where to buy the book, the8secrets.com. That's where you'll get all of these bonuses. There's like well over a couple hundred dollars of bonuses. We have a whole Facebook group. Uh, it's it's freaking amazing and you guys will continue to get more and more goodies um, but the eight and it's just the numeric secrets.com you can please go grab the book because I am so freaking excited about it and y'all um, so I don't know for those of you who've written books you know this already but you get early copies and then you get to send them out to different like friends or uh, you know people that are going to be a part of the promotion and everybody who has received the book and started to you know open it and read it the feedback, like, I, it makes me like almost cry every time. It took me years to write, you know, the, the book is, it's, it's, it's really incredible. It's got a lot, a lot of goodies and it's very, very structured. Like we go over the science, the psychology of manifestation. Um, you know, I was telling you guys yesterday, like Marcy Shimoff, she um, loves the book. Um, I won't say everyone's names. I want you guys to just follow me on social media so you can see all, all the people who are reading it. But the feedback, um, people have been reaching out and they're like, this is like my new Bible, man. I'm I'm reverting back to this. This is so incredible. This is, I can feel completely different. I feel your love. I feel, you know, it's all this stuff where I'm like, it worked. Every, you know, all of my intentions for this book, whatever it's supposed to be in the high school of all, it worked. It's freaking cool, man. Okay. Um, questions, questions, questions. Looking for question marks. That's... Okay, we answered that. Is there a way to watch both parts again, please? Yes, so if you guys missed yesterday, um, just search. When you go into our, our group here, the three days, you're going to go to the, the search bar and just um, type in day one and you'll see yesterday's. I have so much I've learned today. I'm very happy, thank you so much. 
Can you raise your vibration enough to help someone else? Yes, absolutely. And when you only focus on your vibration, that's, that's my rule. Like every time that I wanted to save a family member or a friend or whatever, I was like, the best thing I can do is become the greatest version of me. Shine my light so brightly that they go, what are you doing? Or wow, you've changed a lot. Instead of, you know, talking at them or trying to shift them. And then they throw up a wall because they're like, you know me too well, or I know you too well. Instead, I just showed them what embodiment looked like. Um, how did you get over needing to know the why for your miscarriage? I chose my why, I guess. I mean, for, for myself and my own experience at first, yeah, I was like, why did this happen? How could this happen? This is so bizarre. But I also know that everything, or I choose to believe, I should say, that everything does happen for a reason. And I don't believe it's to punish me. And so I sat there and I was like, what, what possible beauty could come from this, right? What a yucky thing. How could something beautiful come from this? And, you know, getting myself out of victim mode, right? And all the, all the pain of that. And it took, you know, a couple of days and off and on it would, you know, fluctuate, like I said. But me understanding, wow, I have an opportunity here. Let me listen to the little tiny whispers that are showing up in my life right now. Let me lean into them and let me see how can I live for my daughter and enhance my life in such a way so that I can still feel connected to her and all the blessings that I knew she would have brought and if she came fully earth side, how do I live that out anyway? And that became my why. Um, how to keep your heart open when, work, when you work in a toxic environment. So first things first would be ensuring that it's truly toxic, right? I mean, if people are literally talking down to you and they're angry and they're all this stuff, then one, remember, if you are the more charged battery in the room, if you will, you can juice others up, but I don't, I don't expect, or I don't think you should like sit there and do, you know, tons of acts of service or try to lift them up, but you just stay in your little bubble and you're like, this is my world. And if that's, that's the thing too, right? What's the lesson? So if you're like, I'm in a toxic work environment, do I just quit and leave? Which sometimes might be the answer. Like what's the lesson though? Are you going to recreate it? Will you end up in another toxic work environment? If it continues, if it's a cycle, then there is a lesson versus something that's just simply not meant for you. So if, for example, the cycle of toxic relationships I would get myself in, at some point I have to go, okay, I might be a part of the problem here. What the heck, man? But that doesn't mean that I should stay in those relationships. But there was a lesson I needed to uncover. And it's, the cool thing is, as soon as you learn the lesson or you uncover the root, if you will, and you make those you know, little or big changes that are needed, never happens again. It's beautiful. So I would urge you to be like, okay, why would I be in this space? Do I need to honor myself more? Am I supposed to go start my purpose work and start my own business? Um, do I need to love on these people? The answer could be anything, but your intuition will guide you to what is the purpose of this? Why is this showing up in my life? Is it to enhance and move me forward? Or is it something that's simply not meant for me? Okay. How is the best way to send love to a loved one, my partner who is struggling with depression? This is such a good question. How would I answer this? I'm gonna say it the same way, and sometimes I answer the same question differently depending on the energy I feel from each person. I would still say, you sh oh, sorry, you shine your light. You shine your light as bright as you can. You're a safe haven for them and you show them what's possible. What does a life look like without depression? Awesome, you guys are answering everyone's questions about the book too. Okay. Okay, so for, we're going back to that question on the Heartland story. I'd like to know how you knew that it was the right decision and not a sign to not do it. I felt like when you go that far into something, it could have been two things, right? I could have gotten attached and been like, well, I've gone this far, I have to do it, right? But if it felt heavy to me, then I would know that I wasn't thinking clearly. But I have this really simplistic um, thing that I go to whenever I'm like, what's, what is truly right for me? And it is love versus fear. It is one of the most simplistic lessons. I think it's like the first lesson in the 30 day authentic creation program, but love versus fear is, or if you want to change it to light versus heavy at any time where I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Where do I go from here? I go, does it feel light or does it feel heavy? And regardless of the outcome, I'm surrendering to the full outcome. It may not go perfectly in every moment, but it will be exactly what I need. There might be a lesson along the way. And as long as I lean into the lesson as it shows up, it will actually go perfectly. And so when I sat there that day, when, you know, I've got family calling me saying, don't do it. And you know, I, I, all this stuff, I was like, all of that feels like fear. And 
the experience that I've had up till now has felt so light. And the idea of moving forward with this feels light. So regardless of where it ends up, I know that it's where I'm supposed to be. I know that in some way it will enhance my life. I don't know how exactly, but it will, and it's where I'm supposed to be. And it turned out beautifully. And the, you know, there was, there was so much growth to it. Um, and it wasn't always perfect, perceivably perfect, right? But it was always high vibrational because I chose that. So for me, I choose what feels light, what feels like it's coming from love. And again, not to confuse love with like easy breezy lemon squeezy all the time. It's that I am empowered enough, I'm strong enough to grow through whatever shows up because this is what comes from the light and the love. And again, anything that does show up is enhancing who you can become. It's bringing you closer to your authentic self. It's not here to sabotage you, but it is here to help you grow. Okay. What is your take on negative energy? Ooh. Um, so, you know, I have worked with a lot of different people. I have worked with the people who have done the bad things. And of course, I have helped the individuals who have had the bad things done onto them. So I think I come with a little bit of a unique experience or perspective, I should say. I feel like, you know, I call it the light and the darkness, right? The darkness is stuff or energy that has forgotten that it is made of the light. So it is my job to as much as possible remind them that they are of the light. So negative, you know, is also that. And by all means, there is absolutely situations, scenarios, people and all that jazz that I don't want in my everyday life because they feel like a denser vibration. But, and, and I'll have to have my boundaries around that where I'm like, okay, they're not gonna, you know, sit here and have dinner with me every night, but I'm going to shine my light. And if, you know, if they step into my world, they'll feel that high vibration so much that they'll either completely remove themselves because I'm just so rock solid and I'm not willing to feed into anything that's negative, which would help grow it, right? I'm not lending my incredible high vibrational power to that, you know, stuff. But if it wants to exist around me, like I dare you to come into my bubble because bzz, bzz, like a, like a, <laughs> what's this thing? Like a bug zapper. <laughs> They'll just, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. I th that would be cool if it happens that way without them obviously dying like a bug, but just, you know, that they're impacted by the high vibration. So showing them what's possible. Um, negative, I absolutely use the word sometimes and depending on, you know, the situation, it, it makes sense, but um, I'm not afraid of negative. I guess that's the one thing I'd want to say. Like the darkness doesn't um, scare me uh, very much at least. It's just not my vibration. Okay. Most fast and effective way to manifest? Buy my book. <laughs> Read the whole book. Because this is the thing, right? People, I, I wanted, give me the cheat sheet to life. Make it easy. And it is easy as you acquire, you know, the tools and you master yourself. Like, it's, it's really easy to live a beautiful life at this point in my life. It really is. Um, but if I look back, there was more struggles than I could ever account for. But because I was growing, leaning into it and getting curious, it didn't feel so hard, right? And it did feel really fast. So buy my book. <laughs> and I, I'm not just saying that just to plug it. I really mean it though. Um, it's, it's the most comprehensive way to get all of that energy and all the understanding in one place. And depending on how fast you read, or if you listen to the audio book, it'll probably take you like two days. Um, although you'll probably want to listen to it over and over again. That'd probably be your, your jam. Um, how do we protect our energy when it comes to the devastation of innocent lives in Ukraine? Again, this is not about protecting our energy. It is about becoming the biggest beacon of light we can be. I remember years ago um, when there was, you guys remember, I can't remember, I think it was the sum, summer of 2020. Was it? Yeah, yeah. It was the summer of 2020 when um, child trafficking just finally got some freaking, you know, um, some space in the media, if you will. And um, child trafficking is a huge huge trigger of mine um child abuse in general i am like i'm i'm not nice mandy in those moments and when all of this was coming out i was like i just energetically because i feel the world i have since i was a little girl um i i started dropping into a lower and lower vibration because i felt helpless and hopeless because all of this stuff and although you know my husband and i do a lot of philanthropic work you just sometimes feel like it's just never going to be enough right and so i was getting self-defeated which lowered my vibration and all that jazz 
And um, thank goodness for my girlfriend. But I called her and I was like, I am not myself. For two weeks now, I am, I'm becoming like worthless to everybody because I'm in such a sad, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm ready to just like, you know, go out there, get in the tunnels and, and you know, wrangle these kids up. And she's like, I know that that's exactly what you want to do. That's exactly what you would do, have done, all that stuff. She's like, that is not what you're supposed to do right now. She said, your job is to hold the highest vibration and be an embodiment of love and serve the people who go into the tunnels. But you are, no offense, Mandy, you're worthless in those actual tunnels. It's, it's you, you're not your greatest version of you in those spaces. You will be more impactful over here. And I was like, what an incredible lesson in life, right? That everybody, if we all do what we are supposed to do, we will create the world that we so hope for. And that sometimes means that we have to put ourselves back in our place or we have to lean in and, you know, become something even greater than what we are right now for the world again. So I wouldn't say it's so much about um, protecting from the energy, but figuring out how to elevate it. And that's authentic and, and really in an intuitive process and unique to every individual on this planet. But if everybody did what they were supposed to do, if you will, as if supposed to is like the thing. Um, but you know, if they were embodying their authentic self, I just don't know if, if, um, if the world would be a low vibration anymore. Okay. All right. Looking for questions, looking for questions. Can you explain tier number three again, please? So tier number three on the emotional scale, again, the bottom is emotions run us. The second tier is we are in a state of neutrality emotionally. We're curious. The top tier is we use emotions to our advantage. So as soon as we get triggered, we see it as feedback. We get excited about it. We create gratitude because we understand it is only bringing something to us to further heal. And that creates a positive emotion and an excitement of further growth, further abundance, more magic, more self mastery. And then we're in that high vibrational space. Okay. What time tomorrow for our challenge? Same time, um, 10 Pacific, 11 Mountain Standard. So it's 11 o'clock my time. I'm in Colorado, but I think Pacific time, I realize nobody knows Mountain Standard time. So sorry, I keep giving it to you guys. You're like, what does that even mean? Um, but it's 10 o'clock Pacific. I would love to hear the alien story. Oh, I have way too many. Um, I'll, I'll share something soon on a potential radio show I'll be on, and that's where I'll share all that stuff, where it's, you know, if you want to hear it. Um, does this mean I do not need to work intensively on my past to understand my mind? In the way you're asking it, no, you don't. Your past is still going to come up, to, you know, to, to be like, hi, can we, you know, talk about something? But my philosophy is let's work on the beliefs that show up today. They may be rooted from the past, but for example, um, unfortunately, I've, I've experienced rape. If I had to go back into the room and relive the rape, I would never, I don't think I'd ever heal. One, it would trigger me back into the full vibration of that, you know, terrible experience. And two, I wouldn't be able to get out of it, right? And so instead I'm like, okay, what beliefs did I create from the experience that I have in the now? Because there might've been some things that you didn't pick up, right? And some that you did. So instead I like to look at, what's not working in my life right now and regardless of where it came from what's my beliefs in the now what's the thought process and let me heal that and i've seen it kind of retroactively heal the trauma so you don't have to go back into it can we still access day one yes you can just search for day one in there i saved it how did you get started with sharing your messages in paid venues my story is actually a funny one i don't know if it's like most people um, back in 2015, I was starting to make videos on Facebook, just on my personal page. I had moved to Florida. I had, a, for a short while, escaped a very abusive relationship and got a new job and thought, you know, I was on cloud nine and I had no money. I had this little apartment. I was sleeping on the floor. My desk was like a turned over cardboard box and I was so happy so freaking happy. That's actually why I think I started talking about the authentic self because for me, I always was a people pleaser, so I didn't even know who I was, you know? So for me to be away from my family, away from everything I'd ever known, I used to live in Arizona, 
and going all the way to Florida, just that physical distance, I thought, oh my gosh. And for a short while, it was amazing. I met who I really was and I liked her. I really liked her. And then unfortunately, um, that abusive relationship followed me there. And for a short bit, um, thank God I had my clarity for a little while. I'm always, I always tell people, I'm like, just get away from the situation for a minute. But so even if you get back into it, you can see the incredible difference in the duality of the realities. Um, but you know, that kind of happened there. But anyways, I was making videos in that time where I was alone and just discovering myself and just sharing it with like my few friends. Cause I was a little lonely. I, I moved to Florida. I didn't really know anybody. And so I would just make videos on Facebook. Um, and I was very socially awkward, introverted, believe it or not. And so I was like, well, if I can just sit in my own house and, you know, make a video, I'll still feel the connection, but then I don't actually have to like go out and make friends here. Cause I don't know how you make friends. Do I join a group? That sounds really awkward. No way. And so I would talk about um, energy and um, what I was go going through or growing through. And I was just sharing. It's probably similar to this, except for I'm a lot more confident now. I have a lot more to say, that's for darn sure. And um, over time I uh, ended up meeting, well, kind of meeting, this is the shortened version, so hopefully it still makes sense because it's a lot to explain. I ended up um, meeting my now husband who became my best friend and he actually told me, he's like, I love your videos, but what are you selling? And I was like, I'm not selling anything. You know, my, my feeling of like, oh, that'd be terrible to sell something. I was like, I'm just trying to help people and like, because I helped myself and you know, I'm, I'm still figuring all this stuff out. And he's like, well, you should be selling something. And just the way he said it, I was like, you're so gosh darn right. You are so gosh darn right. And that led me down a journey of eventually offering uh, very different things to, I've grown so much and I'm so blessed. Authentic Living has grown incredibly over the past you know, seven years. But, uh, and, and people say that, they're like, how in the heck did you guys do this this fast? And I'm like, manifestation, hello, personal growth. I always say like, if you want the greatest self growth, be an entrepreneur. And if you want to 10X that growth, be an entrepreneur in the self-development industry. Woo, it's amazing. So anyways, um, and I just, I started offering my services. Some people um, dogged me for it. Some people didn't want to buy. Some people loved it, um, but it was, it, I just, I just grew, grew and grew and realized that it was, you know, my purpose work. And I just kept going where I was led and, um, pushing myself, you know, greatly outside of my comfort zones and, um, eventually moved into higher and higher spaces. But that was, you know, a progression over the years. Hopefully I answered that well. Uh, da, 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 da. aha, the heart does not exist in time. My husband gambles and lies to me. How can I stay in a good place vibrationally? This is probably one of those moments where you go, okay, what's the lesson? And is this something that I want to continue? Like what, what vibration do I want to be on? And which one am I currently choosing? And what would the steps look like towards getting into a new vibration? But I won't tell you specifically what to do. What's the name of the group for the book? Um, the Eight Secrets basically eight secrets to powerful manifesting the name of the book. Um, but you guys will need your order number to get in. So just have that handy as well. I want to make sure that everybody, you know, is, is growing with us. When you shift the frequency during a stressful moment, say I told you guys we're going to go past 11 or 12, whatever time it is. When you shift the frequency during a stressful moment, is it the outcome of the conflict able to be changed? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because again, Conflict typically occurs because one of your personas are dancing with one of their personas. But if all of a sudden your persona is unwilling to do the salsa, they're dancing solo, right? So yes, absolutely can change. And you know, something that I've realized is more often than not, even if it's not their human self in moments of conflict, their soul self is waiting and hoping that somebody's going to go first. I noticed that in my family, like, we had plenty of trauma as, as we all do, but I started healing it. And I mean, I, I got backlash for it for a wee bit, but I kept healing it and kept leaning in and having the tough conversations and saying how I felt. And most often, more often than not, um, it, they didn't say this specifically. Well, some of my family did, but they're like, someone had to go first. Like sometimes your family or your friends or your coworkers are like, is somebody going to show us the way? And what if that's like the sole contract in and of itself? How beautiful is that? Right? 
But yes, the conflict can change. <laughs> what if I bought the book from Ad Libris? No problem at all. I know, depending on where you guys are, there's so many extra things. Um, just put your order number in there in the Facebook group. So find that eight, um, eight Secrets to Powerful Manifesting Facebook group. Just put an order number in there and um, they'll still make sure that you get in there. And then all the bonuses are in that Facebook group. They are emailed to you as well, but um, you can get in there. So glad to see you on the Hay House team. They changed my life. Y'all, I will say I freaking love Hay House. Like I had no idea, you know, what is, this is my first um, published book. I self-published my first book. I wrote it in three months and it was just the universe told me to do it. And I was like, okay, I did it. I'm, and then I'm moving on, never marketed or anything. And it did really well. And it was actually another publishing company that had reached out to me and said, do you have another book in you? And I was like, uh, I mean, if you're asking, if you're the universe telling me I need to write another one, sure. And one of my friends, um, who is a intuitive, she's like, I keep seeing you writing a book on, you know, the, the beach is right there. And of course, the day I moved into our second house in Laguna Beach, I opened up the office doors right on the beach. We, the water, it looked like a, we were on a cruise ship. The water was so close to our house. And um, I started writing the book. But anyways, um, yeah, Hay House ended up falling in my lap so beautifully. And they are amazing to work with. They are like family. They, I just can't say enough good things. Um, they're, they're just, it's a beautiful, beautiful place and they are really there to help the world. And I'm sure you guys can feel that. Um, but I'm so honored to be a part of Hay House now and hopefully for many more years to come and many more books. Okay. Um, da, 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 lots of ahas. I love this. I love this. Okay. I'm trying to look at a couple more questions because I'm getting hungry guys. My husband's laughing at me. How do we how do we keep our mind in the present? Because it keeps riding the wave back and forth between the past and the future. Let's keep it super simple at first, y'all. When I find myself like reliving the past or anticipating a negative future, my biggest now is working with my five senses. So I will say, do I have any tastes in my mouth? Or can I, you know, go eat a chip or um, drink some tea or, you know, something to where I can experience a taste. And then I'll say, what does it taste like? What's all the movements in, in, you know, my mouth? What is it doing for the rest of my body? Can I feel the warm tea going down? And I'll just be like fully present with it. What do I hear? And I'll spend a couple minutes in each sense. So I've been mindful for, by the end of it, at least maybe 10 minutes, but I'll go through all of my senses. What do I feel? What do I want to feel? And I'll just experience it fully. And what that does is reintroduce the vibration of mindfulness the feeling of mindfulness back into your world. So that's the way I'm gonna answer it today is just jump back into your senses and what is truly in front of you. And that will help you get back into the now. And I do that a lot with my PTSD folks also, especially I'm um, like sexual assault survivors or veterans. We're like, okay, hold on. Because sometimes the trigger can be so, you know, you, you feel it physically, physiologically, it's everything's happening again, right? So we stop and we say, what's actually truly in the now? Let's use all of our senses to get there. Okay, thank you guys for all the love. Question, how do I shift? I love when people even type out, they're like, I'm getting frustrated because I don't know. Ah. Question, how do I shift the belief once and for all that it takes time to manifest and I'm always looking for evidence and if I don't see it, I feel skeptical and frustrated. Ugh, how do I stay out of my head? I think it's okay to ask for signs but be, be able to listen to the signs that also include action. So for myself, I know that if I'm going to ask for something, if I'm gonna be so bold to ask for something from the universe, you know, from the universe, whatever, if I wanna create something, there may be a couple potholes along the way. There may be something I need to learn about myself so that I don't just get the thing, but I embody the frequency in which it exists on so that I can keep it, so I can stay there. That's the bigger piece here, y'all, is again, always being on the vibration. It's not like, well, I got the Ferrari one time, but I can't even make the, the payments a year later, right? We need to embody the vibration of the things that, you know, currently exist on that vibration. And so if you're looking at, you know, your question, you're like, I want evidence, that's okay. Also ask for signs to move towards it. Cause that's normally what 
you might see like the butterfly. You're like, the signs are my, uh, butterflies are my signs. Cool. You see the butterflies. You're like, it's on the way. And then you're like, it never showed up. What the heck, right? Or it's been five years or something. Again, divine timing, if that feels light and right. But most often, you also get moments of growth so that you can meet the vibration of it because you probably aren't on it yet or you already have it, right? So then you go, okay, so if I, let's say that all of a sudden I'm like, I want to be a billionaire. I want to be a billionaire. I don't know that vibration yet. So if I set that out, if I do, and I'm going to talk to you guys about set it and forget it manifestations tomorrow, huge manifesting tool. So y'all better tune into that. Let's say that I set it and forget it. I want to be a billionaire, right? Just for simplicity's sake. Well, I haven't been there yet. So I need to introduce myself to the vibration. And if I'm setting it up, well, then there's probably going to be some things that are going to show up that are not here to deviate, but they are going to help me move forward. So what I really need to do is make sure that I am clear and aware and paying attention to any signs that do need to show up. Does that make sense? So I might be like, oh, I want to be a billionaire or whatever. And then, um, I don't know, a seminar pops up from some billionaire. I don't, it could be that simplistic. That'd be really like nice if it was that easy every time. Right. Um, or maybe, um, you know, someone triggers me about money and then I fall back into a persona, but really I'm like, Oh wait, that was a trigger that was showing me that I still have a money block that I need to get through to become that. Right. So just pay attention to the signs and lean into all the growth that pops up after you set that intention. So I think that's probably where people get stuck more so. The eight secrets.com. Is that right? Show is Jane. Um, what other programs do you teach? Where could I see them? Um, so I teach quite a few different things. I am most known for my practitioner certification program. It is used with first responders. It is used with coaches of all sorts. Um, I call it 11 authenticity practitioner. It mirrors a lot of what I did clinically with psychosomatic illnesses, getting to the root, embodying unconditional love, and so many of the missing pieces. Whether you are currently a coach, a therapist, a psychiatrist, I have had every walk of life in there. Um, everybody benefits from the program because the first couple weeks are actually about personal growth. So you get to embody the shifts so you know how to give it to someone else. And then we jump into all of the tips and techniques. Um, but the LAP, that's what we call it. So whenever you see someone, by the way, in any of my groups and they say hashtag LAP and then they put their name, they're a certified practitioner. Um, but anyway, so that's what I'm most known for is my certification program. It's freaking amazing. I can't say enough about it. Um, then we have second tiers to that master coach levels and all that jazz. And then for like personal growth, if you're like, I don't know, I, I would like to just do something completely for myself. There's the authentic creation program. That's a 30 day program. That's like what built authentic living. That program is timeless. I go back to those lessons all the time myself because they still apply no matter what stage of life I'm in. And then there's Mandy 365. That is a year long program. That one's super cool. Um, we do different events. Um, anyways, if you go to, go to authentic living for life.com, authentic living for life.com, you'll see some different programs and you'll also be able to check out um, my husband's programs. For those of you who are more on the energy side, you might find something that you dig. Okay. We'll do two more questions. Deal? I'm just looking for a question mark here. I gotta do the see more click thing. Will this group be this is a good question. Will this group be closed after the three days? No. We always keep the challenges open, sometimes indefinitely. Don't ask me why some do and some don't. I don't really know. Um, but sometimes, uh, we will shut them down eventually, but usually after a couple weeks, cause I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to watch it a couple times, you know, experience the energy of it and then, you know, move forward and you guys make sure, I think all of you would be on my email list now, but this is how you'll be notified for future challenges. And then also make sure you guys find me on social media. Um, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram and, and um, Facebook and YouTube, but I don't YouTube. I don't check enough. Um, but I'm not on, what's the one called Twitter. I'm not on that one, um, but otherwise I'll post about the challenges on all of those platforms as well, or just really cool stuff. So you're going to want to be on there. Uh, okay. One more question. Oh, everyone throwing I love you's out to everybody. 
Okay, this is the last one I'm gonna answer. I really like this one. And I wanna keep answering questions, y'all. I like things to be complete, but I think we'll just, we'll keep going. We should just do like a whole event of questions, right? How can I stop other people's negativity from consuming me? I'm an empath. I love this question so much for so many reasons. Who's an empath here? Let me know. So um, I am as well. And by the way, I know that this is floating around in the internets a little bit where they're like empaths. Um, are just people who are have experienced so much trauma that they're always like looking over their shoulder and they can sense things. I agree with that to a sense, but there's no spirituality to that. And there are individuals who have come onto this planet who are so incredibly gifted and they don't have serious trauma. So I can say, you know, personally, of course, I've experienced tons of trauma and I am an empath. There's a big difference between when I am intuitive and I'm feeling people to serve them than I'm experiencing or I feel like someone's about to blow up and there's conflict and, and shit's about to go down, right? Those are very different vibrations. So I understand what people are trying to get at there and I also, I don't really agree with it, but I kind of agree with it, just so you guys know. So, okay, tons of impasse in here, right? You guys feel people, you feel them. I know that if you are an empath, it is nothing but a gift. By all means, me as an empath years ago, I didn't have the tools. I didn't, I don't, I didn't even know I was an empath. I was just like, why do I feel like shit all the time? But ultimately I was experiencing everybody's energy around me. So I made sure one, still important to this day, I'm alone a lot. My mornings are sacred. I make sure I know who I am today. I know my energy and then I can introduce others, right? And so within that energy field, I'm like, this isn't for me, this is for me, you know, whatever it is. And I can also then differentiate when I'm meant to serve someone that I can feel, or I am meant to release someone that I can feel, right? So as a beautiful reminder, if you are an empath, it is a gift. See it only as a gift. And as you master empath, which is, do I serve them? Do I not? How do I honor myself? How do I know my energy so well? and you know, stay solid. And I'll tell you guys, I can, I truly can pretty much hear people's thoughts most often. It's one of the things I was known for in the clinic. They're like, how did you know that she was thinking that or that that was her root? And I'm like, I just ping pong around and understand their whole, the way their brain's wired. I understand their thought process. I get why they think that way and I know how they got there. I don't know, it's just an intuitive thing. It's a gift. It has helped me help so many people, but I choose to use it as a gift. And then I clear my energy more often than most perhaps because I need to. That's why I live practically in the middle of nowhere. I like to be alone. I also love company. I choose my company wisely and I serve. So I use my empathy or my empathic skills to serve people so that I can touch them. I can feel them. I can create deep connection. And then like after this, I'm probably going to go upstairs for a minute. I'm going to journal for a wee bit and I might like run some water over my hands just to make sure, okay, I'm back to me after, you know, I shared with hundreds of people or thousands of people, right? So if you're an empath, even if it's debilitating you right now, stop seeing it as a curse. You're just surrounding yourself with the wrong energy. That's all that's happening here, which is a gift that you're now aware of that. So the only way to go is up, but it is an absolute gift meant to serve people, understand yourself, understand energy. So use it as such, please. Okay, that is it for our day two. Tomorrow, day three, same time, same place. I'm super excited. We're gonna be going over energy. We're going over vibration. We're gonna get a little bit more woo-woo. I'm probably gonna do some conscious channeling so that you guys can really feel the vibration of high-level manifestation. That's what I'm gonna come to the table with tomorrow. So it's gonna be a whole lot of fun and we're still allowing people in the group. Normally we close them on the first day, but I think there was some confusion. So we still have quite a few um, people who are still coming in. So if you wanna invite your friends and family, please still do. Thank you again to those of you who have already purchased my book. It's coming out on the 22nd. I am so excited to get it in your hands. Um, and there'll be some really cool bonuses for those of you who are like, I wanna buy a book. I wanna buy a book for a couple of my friends and family so that we can do our own little book club. Um, we're always thinking of cool ways to get this work out into the world. and. I can't really say it's always my work. It's just information that's flown through me and I'm lucky enough to be a vessel of it to serve humanity in this way. And I can tell you right now, at least in the way that I feel in this state of, of high level manifestation, it's going to so beautifully impact the world and um, each of you embodying that vibration and bringing it out into the world further in whatever way is in the highest good of all and whatever way feels authentic, 
will only make this world a more beautiful place. So thank you guys for joining me. And in case no one has told you today, I love you all so much. Bye.